Welcome to this edition of Valor Media. This is episode number 71 for June 14th, 2021. And I'm your host, Mark Appenzeller. And if you're joining us in the United States today, I'd like to wish you a happy Flag Day. Today's episode falls into our series that we call Valor Excel, where we share strategies with you to help you thrive in your business, whatever that is. It can be an actual corporation, a company, a nonprofit. It can be a small business. It can be a church, a volunteer organization, pulling your efforts, your time, and your talents to bring some desired result about, hopefully to do it in a way that's efficient, in a way that doesn't drive you crazy, and that inspires you and motivates you to come back and do the same thing tomorrow. That's really what Valor Excel is all about. Valor Excel is a component of Valor Ministries that is very specifically targeted toward trying to share our knowledge base with others. For many years, we've operated as a small nonprofit, and we've had to become pretty creative when it comes to problem solving. So we want to be able to have others benefit from what we have learned many times through experience. And that is very specifically what I want to be able to share in today's episode, which I am entitling, Hey Buddy, Where's the Fire? Now, if you're younger, maybe that joke doesn't make sense. But when I was growing up, you heard that a lot. And it was the whole idea of the speeding motorist being pulled over by the police officer and being asked, Hey Buddy, Where's the Fire? In other words, the only legitimate reason you should be going that fast is if you're driving to a fire trying to put it out. Well, I'm calling today's episode, Hey Buddy, Where's the Fire? Because I really want to focus on this idea of what is our response time to the fires that sometimes creep up in our business. And I'm certainly not talking about a real physical fire, but many times we get so enmeshed in what we're doing that we fail to notice that there are all these little simmering things here, there, and everywhere If we don't pay attention to them, if we don't discover what the root cause of those problems really is, they can suddenly burst into flames, usually at the most inconvenient, inopportune time. And worst case scenario, four of them decide to ignite at the same time. I call that the perfect storm. Today, I just want to touch a little bit on that concept because it's really easy in whatever your business is to kind of get so routine oriented that you lose the perspective of analyzing what it is that you're doing. And especially if there's a scenario where you appear on the surface to really be succeeding, it's easy to con yourself into believing that you're doing things well and that you are on a sustainable trajectory. Now, maybe your business is a moneymaker. And maybe you're in a situation where you're making a lot of money. I hope that you are or that you soon will be if that's a business goal of yours. Maybe you're not a money maker. You may be a nonprofit and your goal is simply helping others. You may be a ministry, a church, a social services agency, a community organization. And so for you, Success isn't measured in dollar bills, it's measured in the number of people that you are able to interact with and bring some sort of significant life change to. Well, maybe you're seeing a lot of people come through your particular organization. Maybe all of your programs seem to be running on all cylinders and you're sitting back thinking, wow, this is great. That can be an extremely dangerous place to be. Because in that success, whether it's monetary or human, there's always that element of danger along the lines of kind of relaxing what we do. We stop being vigilant. We stop watching all the little things that can get out of control. And if nobody is minding the store, the next thing you know, we have lost focus. You're suddenly confronted with something that you never had to face before but you feel incredibly unprepared to deal with it. You thought everything was great. You thought you had it all worked out. You were on this perfect roll. You were building really good momentum. And then suddenly, here comes this problem from out of left field, and you don't know what to do about it. I think it's the idea of convincing ourselves, well, we have figured out how to do this. Let me let you in on a secret. We'll never figure out how to do this, whatever this is, because this is always changing. If this isn't changing, it probably means that it's stagnating and stagnation is really the first sign that things are heading in a really bad southward direction. 
if we're growing, if we're maturing as an organization or a business, we should be stepping out into new things. We should be coming up with new projects, new goals. Status quo doesn't work very long. And again, it's that self-inflicted con job. If we convince ourselves that we've got it all together, we're pretty much saying, I don't have it together. Because if I did, I would know that I'm never at a safe enough place to tell myself I've got all the bases covered. So today I want to share a couple of things with you to hopefully just challenge your perspective. Are you in a fabulous place in your business or are you on a dangerous precipice and you don't even realize it? Jumping back to that, hey buddy, where's the fire analogy, I wanted to talk just a little bit about some statistics related to fire departments. Now I think that firefighters are incredible people. Kurt Vonnegut once said, there is no greater emblem of man's humanity to man than a fire engine. And I very much agree with that. The whole idea of walking into a burning building to save the lives and property of people you don't even know is incredible. Now, there's some really fascinating statistics that were compiled by the National Fire Protection Association. And it's data that runs a span of years from 1980 to 2018. It's basically tabulating a lot of elements related to fire department calls nationwide. So listen to these statistics and tell me if you see an interesting trend. Now, in 1980, there was a total of 2,988,000 fire-related calls, and there were 896,500 false alarms. That's a crazy statistic. There were almost 3 million true fires and nearly a million false alarms. Fast forward to 2018. In 2018, there were 1,318,500 fire-related calls and there were 2,889,000 false alarms. Now, what's incredible there is way back in 1980, 3 million real fires, a little shy of a million false alarms. In 2018, less than one and a half million real fires, but nearly three million false alarms. In that short span of time, just 38 years, the false alarms increased almost to the exact level of what the true fire-related calls were back in 1980. That's kind of a sad commentary on what a lot of people apparently do in their spare time. But the other interesting thing there is that the real fire calls dipped dramatically, less than half of what they were 38 years earlier. Now, I shared those statistics because one of the things that I find really interesting there is that the false alarms, the distractions, they increased dramatically, whereas the true fire-related calls decreased dramatically. Now, there are a lot of factors that influence that, I'm sure, better design and construction methods for homes, the widespread use of smoke detectors, and just in general, probably a lot better public awareness of fire safety prevention. So that certainly explains why that would have happened. But it's also really interesting to me that the false alarms increased so dramatically. So if you look at those 2018 statistics, it's tempting to say, well, it looks like in the long run, fire departments really ended up being ahead of the game because they were responding to less than half of the fires that they were back in 1980. And that's true. But they were now responding to three times as many false alarms, and the false alarms actually outnumbered the real fire calls. So whatever savings of time, money, and effort might have existed because of the reduction in the fires was now being eaten up by false alarms. I think from the business perspective, that kind of happens to us sometimes. We do things for a while. Maybe we have a couple of really solid business practices that we put into place. And we might feel like we're really building momentum. We have some good equilibrium. And we might be doing a lot of things well. But then there are those false alarms. And to me, the false alarms are all those little things in our business life that eat up our time, our resources, our energy. They steal our focus, and they shouldn't really be happening. 
So irrespective of what kind of success we're enjoying and what we're actually doing, we have all these false alarms to deal with. Sometimes those false alarms might come from a client or a customer or an interaction with some outside party that we really don't have any control over. But many times we create those false alarms ourselves. Because like I talked about earlier, we get lulled into this false sense of security. We believe that we have this really solid structure for what we're doing and we get lazy. We kind of relax our standards and we presume that things will always be as they are now. That can really be a massive danger. And we stop being responsive. We stop recognizing the little smoldering embers that we should be putting out now. And before you know it, we find ourselves in situations where many things in the structure of our businesses are bursting into flames because, again, nobody was minding the store. Getting back to the firefighting analogy, I found some interesting statistical data on the Washington, D.C. government website. It was stats from September of 2015, and in that one month, there were a total of 35,072 fire calls responded to by departments throughout D.C. Of the 35,000, 33,851 of those calls were responded to within two minutes, meaning that within two minutes of 911 receiving that call, engines were leaving the firehouse. That's pretty incredible, 33,000 out of 35,000. And out of those 35,000 fire calls, responders arrived on the scene within 12 minutes for 27,131 of those. Those are amazing response times. But that was because there was clear focus. There was a sense of immediacy and urgency. When that call got funneled through to the stations from 911, they had a plan of action. They knew what was needed. They were out the door. We like to think that's how we respond in our businesses, but a lot of times we don't. What if those fire departments were a little bit more casual? And what if on the way to the fire scene, they decided to go through the drive through at Chick-fil-A? Well, those response times would look pretty dramatically different, wouldn't they? Now, that's a ridiculous example, but sometimes that's how we are in our business settings. Sometimes we take our eyes off of what is really in front of us. Again, we stop looking at these important things that just somehow fall by the wayside And the next thing you know, we're dramatically distracted. One of the things that Valor Excel is all about is helping businesses and organizations to really soberly self-appraise themselves. We developed a tool to help facilitate that. And it basically is a way for you to take your organization's temperature. As you maneuver through it, you'll be addressed with 30 statements about your business And you will provide an answer as to how often that statement applies to you. And when you're done, you'll discover that your business falls into one of three categories. You have to be in at least a category. You can't be in more than one, and there are no other categories. Your business will either be shown to be inactive, reactive, or proactive. Now, if you're inactive, there are a lot of things broken, You're not making any progress and you don't really have any plans to. You're holding on for dear life and hoping that you're still there the next week. That is very much inactive. Now, many businesses fall in the realm of being reactive. They can adjust as things happen. Something comes up and they'll make a course correction and they'll step out and do something new. But where you really want to be is in that realm of being proactive. If your business is proactive, you're looking ahead. You're not waiting for things to happen to you. You're planning in advance. You're taking bold steps. And if something unexpected crosses your path, it doesn't have to rock your world. We really want to help you to move to that place of thriving in your business. And that's why I'd like to extend the invitation to you to reach out to us at Valor Excel so that we can help you to start taking that look at what you're doing. Like I said earlier, never take superficial success and believe that you're set for life. There's always the possibility that things aren't quite as rock solid as you think they are. You can contact us at info at valorxl.com. 
and somebody from our team will reach out to you. We'll start to ask some questions of you to get a better understanding of what's going on with your business. And if you don't know what's going on, we're definitely there to help. We can dissect all the complexities of whatever it is that you're doing. We'll help you to analyze your policies, procedures, and processes to really make sure you're doing things in the most efficient and effectual way possible. Please visit our website at www.valorexcel.com and check us out on Facebook at ValorXL. If you have suggestions for topics in future installments of Valor Media that you would like us to talk about, please contact us at media at thevalorcenter.org. And you can learn more about the vision and mission of Valor Ministries by visiting our website, www.thevalorcenter.org, or on Facebook at Valor Ministries. I encourage you to like and subscribe to this podcast. We publish a new episode each Monday. Some are in this series, Valor Excel, and others are in our Crisis to Thriving series, where we share strategies with you to help you live more abundantly. If this podcast is something that benefits you, would you consider benefiting us? Would you partner with us by financially supporting us so that we can continue to bring you content like this week after week? If so, you can make your tax-deductible donations securely online by visiting us at www.thevalorcenter.org and click on the Donate button. Or you can send a check or money order to Valor Ministries, 324 East Antietam Street, Suite 104, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21740. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time that you invested in this because I think if you really take the concepts we talked about to heart, you can start asking some important questions about the trajectory your business is on. Please come back and join us again next week. And until then, remember this, you were made to thrive.